Building a digital toolbox for asynchronous learning at the elementary level. This video is part of a series developed in conjunction with the Maine Department of Education's Moose platform training materials. However, the content of this video seemed relevant to a number of educators in the field who might be shifting to remote learning and leveraging asynchronous learning opportunities for their students. Therefore, this is being broadly available for educators through the Maine Department of Education's YouTube channel. This session is going to focus on how to use the app YouTube for asynchronous learning. My name is John Graham, and I'm the Elementary Digital Learning Specialist at the Maine Department of Education, and I will be the one talking with you about this digital tool today. Well, I'm sure many people are familiar with YouTube. It should be mentioned that it's the leading video sharing platform on the internet and is a subsidiary of Google. Therefore, it has the power of Google behind it and its video content is going to work across a number of platforms and devices. So the content on YouTube does have the benefit of buy-in from large scale production companies but also it allows um, aspiring professionals and amateurs to share their content as well. That content is often shared in a public way, but there is also the option to share it privately with a smaller group of people or to make those videos unlisted so they're not widely viewable or searchable on YouTube. The content flagging has improved over time, so there are some copyright challenges that have been um, kept in check by these tools, but I think there's still some interesting fair use arguments that go around the content of YouTube. Their audio library is a great resource for content creators who are looking for music that they can use for their projects. It's very searchable and user-friendly and allows for searching for music as well as sound effects. YouTube videos do often come with advertisements or recommended content that can be a distraction for students. So just know that there are a number of tools, like some of the ones that I've mentioned here, that can be used for filtering content when providing it to students. I'm going to start by looking at iMovie and how you'd go through the process of taking an iMovie project and sending it to YouTube. So you can see in the upper right here there is the option of directly sending it to YouTube. And the left bottom left there, it's going to show you what your account is that's attached. So that certainly is an option if you have your account set up. But the other way that you might consider doing it is to do a file export like this. And you can make these adjustments as needed to adjust the quality resolution of your video. And then we're going to let it do its thing. You can see up here in the corner of iMovie, it'll give you this little countdown as it's going through. Now to actually upload the video onto YouTube, so if you've created that video content, whether through iMovie or something else, in the upper right corner, there's the option of uploading a video. And then this is going to take us into our options to find the video where it lives on your computer. And then you can upload it. Then this is where you're going to need to put in some important information. So your title, of course, it will grab the default title. So you just want to make sure that that's correct or adjust it accordingly. Your description, you can obviously make this as long or as short as you would like. This is a great place to put in timestamps as well for video. So if you have content in a video that you want people to be able to jump to directly, you can include that. And you can see it's instantly giving us the link to where that video is going to live. So that can be helpful. And scrolling down here, you can see that there is a thumbnail option. So once you reach a certain point on YouTube, you can add the, your own thumbnail if you have one, or it's going to auto generate thumbnails from the video that you can use. Continuing down, you have the option of adding this to a playlist. You can create a playlist right in there if you wanted to. So I can make a Moose um, training playlist for this, say. And then that playlist, you can make it public, private, or unlisted. So just like the video itself. 
So that can be useful. I'm going to make this unlisted and then create that and go up to check it off and click done. Moving along, there's this next piece about the audience. So this has to do mostly with advertising. So if you check off, yes, it's made for kids. That means that you're not going to be able to have advertising in it, which obviously I'm not having advertising in this particular piece. There's a little explanation there if you check that off. And you can also do age restriction stuff just so you know you could always age restrict yours if it had mature content to it. So something useful to know that there are those filtering options. Now as we move down to some of the other settings down here, of course there are tags. You can put in tags to help folks seek out your video. And I want to get into the subtitles now. So you can set a default language. So I'm going to set English United States. And then there's some closed caption pieces in here. But I definitely want to spend a little bit of time focusing on the closed caption piece because that is definitely one of the kind of main reasons that I would recommend people consider uploading their videos to YouTube. So there's some other other pieces on here. We don't really need to get into each and every one of them. Creative Commons licensing, um, allowing your video to be embedded on a web page, notifying people if they're subscribed to your page, categorizing it. So I'll just put it under education, I suppose. All right, so there are a number of things in here, of course. Um, but I think we'll move on. Actually, I want to see if the thumbnails, now they haven't loaded up quite yet. So the default is it always picks that middle one, but I know I'm going to want the first one, so I'm going to click that and save it. Video elements are some pieces that you can add in, like pop-ups or um, little card notifications um, into your video, just so you know what those pieces are. And then the visibility. So your privacy settings. So I'm going to actually set this to unlisted because I don't think this is something I need everyone out there just necessarily to kind of stumble across. It's going to be kind of part of this training. You can see there are things that you can schedule it. Other uh, aspects there. So I'm going to save this now and it's going to give us that link which we saw in there before so here's my channel videos that show up so I can always click edit and go back in so see that initial thumbnail so I did want that first one so I'm going to click on that one and save that up here so every once in a while you need to go back into so there are analytics that you can leverage if you have a YouTube channel you can do some um, editing in terms of like cropping pieces out of your video or changing music, stuff like that. But I want to really look at the subtitles because this is something. So it allows you to overwrite the track. So here on the left, this is the language in it that has been detected. So it's really important that you use you know, quality recording equipment if you want to get a really nice um, closed caption track there. Um, so you can see as it's playing there, obviously that part at the beginning, there's nothing. Then it kicks in with the talking and you can see you have the option here that you can pause it if you want or when you're typing to make changes in this box here on the left. And I'm going to start by capitalizing learn and making moose all uppercase since it's an acronym. And I'm going to spend a couple minutes tidying these captions up here. So you'll notice the instances of I, as in the first person I, are all lowercase. So if I want to go through and fix those, you can use your find feature in your browser to kind of scroll through those quickly and fix them.
All right, our captions are all set, so let's kind of show them in action now. So if we look at the video, you can see down here at the bottom, if you select that CC icon there, and we click play, it's going to start showing our captions down at the bottom. And there are two different options, well, there are several different options possible, but it has the auto-generated English ones and then the English ones. That's what we actually went through and tidied up there. So if we click play, you can see that it has learn uppercase and then moose all uppercase. So you know how those are the ones that we touched up. So if we go to the auto-generated one, then we click play, you can see that learn is lowercase and moose is all lowercase. So you can see that that is the difference between the two. And finally, I want to show you the YouTube audio library. So they have music on here. You can just click and listen to audio. So what I like about this is that you can search it in a variety of different ways by genre, by the kind of the mood of the music, by the duration. So you can just kind of see here it has these different check boxes. So you could check off a number of things and apply it. So you can kind of whittle it down. You can use these sorting tools to find you know, what you want. And then you can download whatever you need. It'll actually take you to the different artist pages. So maybe you'll find a artist whose stuff has been made available on here that you like. And I've definitely found people that way myself that I'll use for videos that I create. And it's just easy to click and download and pull um, a piece of music like that. Also, if you go to the classic one, I think this is going to change over in a bit here, but the sound effects library here, you can do the same thing. You can play and preview these. You can search for things based on whatever words you want to put in the, for the search there. And they also categorize things as well. It's easy to go through these, preview the different sound effects, and then click to download whatever effects that you'd like to use. And you can always contact me through either my main.gov email address that I have listed here. You can reach out to me through my Twitter account, which is also listed. And I did want to mention that this video and other videos will be available through the Maine Department of Education's YouTube channel, which I have our channel name there. So those are definitely great avenues to check out if you're looking for more resources or have questions or concerns. So please feel free to contact me at any time about content in this video or if you just want to share resources that you think might be of interest to me.